Hello. If you need to organize PAT testing for your business or organization, then there are a few important things that we think you should know. Over the last few years, the PAT testing industry has become very competitive, with lots of companies falling over themselves to undercut each other and offer ridiculously low prices. The problem is, those prices are now so low that the guys doing the work simply can't do it properly if they want to make a profit. Corners get cut. Important parts of the process get missed out, and in some cases, items don't get tested at all. If you employ one of these companies, there's a good chance that dangerous, faulty, or substandard appliances in your workplace won't get identified, leaving your staff exposed to risk and your business in a difficult situation if an accident occurs. We would strongly recommend that you consider using the services of a registered member of the PAT testing network. This is a professional association dedicated to raising standards, sharing good practice, as well as improving the reputation of the industry. Our members have all signed up to a strict code of practice and will offer the best service, advice, and information. If you don't use one of our members, there are still a few ways you can tell if you're getting the right advice from your PAT testing provider. Firstly, and this might come as a surprise, but PAT testing is not a legal requirement. Of course, if you are an employer, then you have a duty to make sure your electrical equipment is safe, and there are many good reasons why you should arrange for your appliances to be looked at ever so often. Your PAT testing provider should be able to give you correct advice in this regard. However, if somebody phones you up and tries to tell you that you need to get all your office computers tested every year to avoid prosecution, then Frankly, they're telling you lies to get your business, and we suggest that you tell them politely where to go. The most important part of the PAT testing process is called the visual inspection. This is where the engineer takes time to carefully look at the appliance to find any faults, such as cracked plugs, split cables, or damage to the case. This part of the process should not be rushed. The inspection will also involve opening the mains plug to check that the wiring is correct and the right fuse is fitted. This is the part that sometimes gets missed, but it is an essential part of the process. Obviously, it cannot be done whilst the appliance is operating. Computers will need to be shut down, kettles will need to be unplugged, and the fridge will need to be pulled out from under the worktop to get to the socket. If your PAT testing engineer is not doing this, then they're not checking the appliances correctly. Some plugs are molded onto the end of the cable and so cannot be opened, although the engineer should always check that the correct fuse is fitted. This plug has been fitted with a small sticker over the screw hole. The sticker is still intact, which means that the plug has not been opened since the appliance was new. This means that a dangerous fault inside the plug would not have been identified, even though this toaster has supposedly been PAT tested four times by a national company. Your PAT testing engineer should carry the right equipment to do the job. A proper PAT testing machine, such as one of these, is essential. You cannot carry out PAT testing with a mobile phone, a socket tester, or a 999 multimeter from B&Q. It seems incredible that we should need to say this, but please understand that you cannot pad test equipment by waving a magic box or an iPhone over it. In fact, there's no app for that. Or by simply counting up the number of electrical appliances in a room and making up the results. As a rough guide, a competent, skilled, and experienced PAT testing engineer should be able to test and record about 150 to 250 items in a day, perhaps slightly more in an office, less in a factory or workshop. If your PAT testing company is trying to convince you that they've tested five, six, seven, or 800 items per day per person, then you can be sure that they haven't been thorough enough and dangerous faults might have been missed. We know that sometimes pad testing is seen as a necessary evil, a box-ticking exercise, or something that we have to do to satisfy our head office, the client, or the insurance company. 
it's very tempting to just simply accept the lowest quote without asking questions. But please think carefully before choosing a patch testing company. A few pounds saved today could prove very costly in the future if you have an accident. Due diligence when choosing your patch testing provider is good sense for your business, your employees and your customers. If you would like to know more about the work that we're doing to raise standards in the PAT testing industry, please search online for PAT Testing Network, subscribe to our YouTube channel, or leave a comment and we'll be in touch. Thanks for watching.